identified all the forces that act on the ladder yesterday. We are going to simplify the problem, just like I did in the homework. Um, and that the simplification is going to be over here. We're going to say that there's no friction between the ladder and the wall. And the reason is very consequential. The math gets extraordinarily more difficult the moment you have two different frictions based on two different normal forces because they are both dependent on where the person stands on the ladder. And they're weirdly dependent. And since it's static friction, they're both unusual. So we're only going to deal with a single frictional force, and that'll be the frictional force on the ground. In fact, we're going to focus on that one because the problem in your homework asks you to figure out what the minimum coefficient of friction is to keep the ladder from shifting. We're going to set the problem up here in class. That way you guys can try and bang it out uh, on your own because I think this is a pretty challenging question. Um, the difference between what we're going to do in class and what your homework is is that I'm going to put numbers to all of it, but your homework has it all algebraic. Is everybody okay with that? I figured this will be a good translation then. So um, I'm going to use a standard like 10-foot ladder. So 10-foot ladder is about 3 meters, so 3 meters will work here. I'm going to have the person standing a safe 2 meters up the ladder. And just to make the math okay, we're going to say 60 degrees is the angle between the ladder and the ground. The ladder, uh, let's go with 20 kilos. That's a heavy ladder. My, most of them would not be that heavy, but that's like 45 pounds. So that'd be a pretty heavy ladder. I'm just doing 20 because it's a nice round number. And I think that's a good way to go. We'll say it, it's a symmetrical ladder. So the, the center mass of the ladder is in its middle. And we are going to make a bit of a concession. We're going to say the person who is standing at the, at the two meter mark has a mass of 80 kilos. The concession is that we're going to say his center of mass is on at his feet. Now, this is not true. And so before I, I, I leave you into this problem, if the person was purely just standing, not touching the ladder in any way, just their feet touching a rung, and they were perfectly uh, perpendicular to the wall, uh, perpendicular to the ground, parallel to the wall, that might be more realistic. But the truth is their center of mass is up here. They're often holding the ladder, and that makes that more complicated, which is why people fall off ladders because they put the ladder too close to where they're standing. They have to lean back to get up the ladder. They change the center of mass and the whole thing falls backwards. You follow me? The angle that they put on the ladder is purposeful to ensure that your center of mass stays over the ladder at all times. But the problem is more complicated than what we're saying here. And I just want you to be aware of that. Um, but this is a fairly straightforward ladder question. We identified all the forces acting on the ladder. I want to give names to them, you know, symbols that we can work from. So we're going to have this upward force due to the ground, the normal force. And we have to differentiate the normal force from the ground from the normal force from the wall. So is NG okay for the ground and NW okay for the wall? Is that good? Uh, we're going to have a frictional force, but there's only the one, and that frictional force is this way. And I'm not going to label it FS for static. I'm just going to say it's friction. Is that okay too? Bless you. Um, we have two other forces that are going to be part of this problem. We have the weight of the ladder, 200 newtons. And we have the weight of the person, 800 newtons. And this is what we're going to go with. There's a variety of ways that people uh, deal with this problem. I like to take my, my object, in this case, the ladder. Yes, sir. Did you say yesterday that there was six forces on the ladder? I sure did. So why? Five? Can you identify the one I left out? I might have made fun of them during fifth period, so I'm trying to be a little nicer. <laughs> you know, I see all three of them across over the next, you know, those three hours, fifth, sixth, and seventh. 
There's some contrast there. I know you all know this, but I did not know this. How was I supposed to know it? Um, I am discovering. Look at it. So I'm going to move that over here. The way I like to do these is I like to take the object and still level it off and place the forces as they act on the object. And you don't have to do it this way, but remember, we're trying to do a net force and net torque problem. So I like to do the net force problem on, the, on a horizontal bar representing the, the object, and I like to do the net force problem on this one, okay? So I wanna kinda of just recreate this portion. Um, I'm just gonna redraw these forces. So I have normal force from the ground, and this has to be 30 degrees. Everybody follow why that has to be true? Because then I'm gonna have a frictional force on the ground, and this has to be 60 degrees. At the middle, I have the weight. 200 newtons, and this has to be 30 degrees. Here, somewhere in the, the, not quite the middle, I've got 800 newtons, and that also has to be 30 degrees. And then I've got normal force on the wall, and that has to be 60 degrees. I know it's a lot, but I'm trying to identify all the forces here. We're gonna do net torque using that diagram and net force doing this diagram. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because one of them, I've identified and highlighted all the angles. These, I recognize all of the forces, all of them are either up or down or left or right. Does that make sense? So we can make a straightforward, super simple, uh, free body diagram if we want. I don't think we need one of these since none of the forces are at an angle with respect to a coordinate system lined up with the ground. But somebody's going to ask me, why am, I make, why am I not making a free body diagram because it's different than yesterday? And I, I want to anticipate that question because it was asked yesterday. So I see an upward force, normal force on the ground. I see two downwards forces, 800 and 200. Should make that normal force on the ground bigger, shouldn't I? And I see friction. Oops, nope, I don't. I see normal force from the wall, friction from the ground. All good? Excellent. So, net force in the x direction is zero, so normal force from the wall equals the frictional force. I don't know either of those forces, so that's not gonna help. And net force in the y direction, well, this one I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get more, but they still have this one to be zero, and that's gonna be normal force from the ground minus 200 minus 800 equals zero. When all these boxes arrived today. Bye. Bye, love you guys. When all these boxes arrived today, I get a call from the office saying, good enough. But that's, that's going to be future Mr. Shelton's problem. Today, Mr. Shelton's problem is apparently this, 1,000 newtons. So we know what the, the force is from the ground. Now, this doesn't tell us what we think it tells us, but at least we have some things to go by. I would love to say we can use something like this, friction equals mu times the normal force, but you know that we can't, right? Because this is an inequality, and we don't know where it is along that inequality. We don't know if we're at the max. In fact, I didn't give you mu either, which is why Christo's question was a little ridiculous. But it's okay. I talked about it yesterday. The idea is I asked for what is the minimum value of mu, so we're going to have to find a way to deal with that. Is that okay? So let's, let's start here. Um, I, the only way I'm going to get that is by finding out what the force from the wall is. That's pretty clear. So we're going to have to shift and go to the other, other part of the problem. So let's slide that over here and take a look at this. Um, <laughs> we need to pick a pivot point. And I think that there's two obvious choices for our pivot point. 
um, either here or here. I think those are the best choices. I actually think for this one that it's easiest to place the pivot point here. It eliminates two of the torques at once. Even though we know what the force from the ground is, eliminating means I don't have to, I don't have to deal with it, and that leaves only three torques. So it makes it pretty straightforward now. So I have torque from the 200, torque from the 800, and torque from the wall. Our three torques. And we know that when you have three torques, uh, or, so when you have a torque, there are three things that you have to take into account. There's a torque arm length, there's the size of the force, and there's the sign of the angle between them. So here we go. Uh, let's handle the 200. It's a three meter long ladder. The center of that ladder would be one and a half meters long. So R is gonna be 1.5. Size of the force, uh, 200, that good for you guys? Now the angle, um, sign of 30 degrees. Is that good for you guys? So is that the right angle to use? There's you know, been some conversation in other classes about whether we should use this angle or this angle. We realize it doesn't make a difference, right? I will, I'm always going to use the acute angle almost every time. So sine of 30. Uh, we do have to identify whether this is a positive or a negative torque. And although, it, look, two of these torques are making it go this way, and one of these torques is making it go this way. I'm trying to follow the rules, but we, just, we can arbitrarily pick positive or negative. But we're going to follow the rules because that's what we do, I guess. So um, right-hand rule, we come all the way over here and say my torque arm is that way, my force is that way, so I am into the board on this one. We good? Into the board? No problems? Into the board. I know that it's not straight down, but anywhere where my finger is down in here, that works. As long as it's not both in the same direction or in opposite directions, it's just the plane defined by the two vectors. And so I'm into the board. So into the board is negative. So I will make my value negative. Um, the 800 is almost exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make it two. And then 800 and then sine 30 degrees. We good so far? All right, so our last torque, three meters away, normal force in the wall, um, sine 60. And I'm doing this on purpose, not because I, I think you guys can't handle it, but I'm going to come over to here and... There are people in the room who think that they could just flip their finger up like that and it would be okay. It's not, okay? We don't do this. This is, this is inappropriate in class and it's inappropriate for the right hand rule. So if you cross the threshold, you're doing it wrong. Everybody follow me? So if you're, if you're flipping people off, you're doing it wrong. It has to be like this. So that the only way you can flip them off is to do that. So I have to turn my hand from here to here and now yeah that looks good so it's out of the board that makes that sucker positive now look <laughs> one of them has to be positive because we know that they all have to sum to be equal to zero so it shouldn't be a surprise one of these one of these forces is trying to turn it the other way good so the math on this not terrible so let's see 1.5 times 200 times the sine of 30 um, 150, negative 150, and um, two times, that's just going to be uh, minus 400, right? Oh, no, 800. 800. Beep. And then plus 3 and times sine of 60 is 0.8, is that 0.866? Right, square three over two. Okay, um, you guys saw that for N from the wall. My word, this is a lot of work.
Actually, it's not been a terrible amount of work, I don't think. We've been interrupted a lot, and it's taken a long time, but it's not been a terrible amount of work. I don't know what the answer is, though, so you're going to have to do it. So what is the normal force in the wall? Can somebody tell me, please? 365.7. Wow. And it was like in stereo. That was pretty cool. I kind of like that. All right. So this one wasn't terrible. It's just a lot of work. I mean, a lot of grunt work, too. You see that, right? So we have the normal force from the wall now, and we know that that has to equal the frictional force. So as I've always tried to say, when you're dealing with friction, try to sub into your inequality if you can, and we can here. This is also the frictional force. So 365.7 must be less than or equal to mu times the normal force, which is 1,000 newtons. I think right there we have got an answer. All we need is for our coefficient of friction to be greater than or equal to 0 0.3657. As long as it is, we're good to go. Do I want to trust that? No, I put the spiky sides down all the time. My ladder has little spikes on the bottom because, well, let's just say that I'm more than 80 kilos and I worry. So um, this, is the, this is a traditional ladder problem. There's another ladder problem that I find to be more difficult and we may or may not do it. It's all about time. It will probably never be on the test. That's the A-frame ladder. Did, I, did we draw one of those in class? So um, I, don't, I didn't put on your homework because they're just, it's, it's punishing. Maybe interesting, maybe not. There's not a lot of statics on the exam. I want you to be familiar with what a statics problem is, but the truth is dynamics is the biggest part of the exam. And I'd like to, to talk about dynamics today. So because there's no statics on the exam and because we've covered a lot and not had a test, we're gonna have a quiz next week. So we'll talk about homework on Monday quiz half a class period on Tuesday. Does that make sense? It's going to be a statics quiz. It's not an AP quiz because there aren't any statics questions that are FRQs. It'll be a FRQ that I wrote that's in the style of one of the multiple choice questions but spread out a little bit. If statics shows up, it often shows up here. Now, there are a group of questions I've left out. They are questions that I think are kind of boring and dull. So uh, 